Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Well, you voted for it and now you've got it. Well, my head scientist, namely Kay Jensen, suggested that I take a closer look at some of the acronyms we find throughout Undertale. Now, I'm not just referring to the ones you likely already know, though I will be going over those in this video as well. It turns out there's a few conspicuous words within Undertale that could have completely different meanings, considering that it's part of the story that EXP and love stand for something you'd never expect. What about words like fun and HP? Well, I'll explain as we go. Is there a completely different dimension to Undertale buried within the secret meaning of its acronyms. Well, it seems so, so let's get started. Upon meeting Sans near the end of the game, assuming we aren't on the genocide path, he takes some time out of his casual style speaking in Comic Sans to address us formally and explain the purpose and meaning of two words, namely EXP and love. In any other game, EXP would mean experience points, and love generally has nothing but positive connotations. In something of an M. Night Shyamalan type twist though, it's revealed that EXP means execution points and love stands for level of violence. Now, I realise that's nothing new to most of you watching, and believe me, it won't be the focus of this video, though there's some interesting trivia and facts I'd like to mention about both acronyms before moving on. For example, did you know that if you beat Napsterbluk by attacking them, you lose one execution point? By this stage of the game, most players would have no idea what EXP really stands for, so this may very well tip you off as to what it really means. After all, in what game do you lose EXP points after beating an enemy? It makes sense in Napsterbluk's case, as execution points increase when you kill someone. With Napsterbluk, you fail entirely, considering that he's already dead, which is why you lose EXP rather than gaining it. This proves, as early on as the ruins, that EXP stands for something a little more than experience points in Undertale. Love, meanwhile, measures our capacity for hurting others, sounding as if it's something straight out of Hotline Miami. Curiously, it's also responsible for our other stats, such as HP, AT and DF, presumably standing for health points, attack and defence. With Love and EXP having obscure alternate meanings, however, why would these acronyms be perfectly normal? The seed for this idea that Kay Jensen suggested is that HP could stand for hope. It's curious to think about how how this would work as we still have to take into consideration that our HP increases with the more monsters we kill. Though I would imagine the human would become more hopeful that they'd escape as they become more powerful, as we have to remember that many players on their first playthrough anticipate the monsters to be the typical antagonists of any video game, in a situation where it appears that we'll be trapped underground forever. It's a morbid thought to think that we may become more hopeful simply by exercising our power over others. However, there's other things that implicate that HP could mean hope. Sans, for example, seemingly has very little as he can be defeated with a single blow. Sans certainly lost hope long ago, as it's a recurring theme where he admits to having given up. Therefore, his low hope could also explain why he has such low health. Admittedly, I don't really see how eating food ties into restoring your levels of hope, but at the same time, I don't really see how it'd restore your health either. That's just one of gaming's great mysteries that's best left unexplained. It's worth noting that our HP is maxed out with each save point we reach. This reinforces the HP meaning hope theory even further, as it's no surprise that these checkpoints that fill us with determination would also restore our sense of hope as we realise we're making progress through the underground. One of the most blatant acronyms has to be MDR. That simply stands for murder. It's a stat that we never see within the game itself, but it's saved internally, only going up when we kill enough monsters for the sake of the genocide path. That is to say your murder count doesn't actually increase if you only kill one or two monsters, or at least not every single monster you come across. This is how the game tracks whether you'll be facing Sans by the end of the game, as if you have a murder level of 16, the game will correctly track that you've been committing genocide on monster kind, and so therefore you'll have to fight Sans himself. MDR is less an acronym with a hidden meaning, more just one that's hidden entirely from the player's sight, serving as a way of tracking how evil we become. Probably the most interesting acronym of all, however, is one that appears only in the game's configuration files. It's a value labelled FUN, or FUN for short, which already raises a few questions. Why would a number determine how much fun we're having? However, when this value is set to a specific amount in specific areas, special events can occur. While a few are innocuous, some tied directly to the mysterious WD Gaster, everyone's favourite Undertale mystery. While we can encounter these events naturally with a little luck, typically they require a bit of game editing. So why exactly is the value that it all hinges on called fun? Could it be because it's more fun to see the strange content hidden away within the game? 
or is FUN also an acronym? I've seen it posited that FUN could stand for Functional Universe Number. The idea here is that Undertale seems to take place over many timelines and many universes, considering the fact that we can reset time to alter events that have already taken place. At points, the timelines become confused, with NPCs remembering us after resetting, and the biggest twist of all, when we wake up possessed by the fallen human, should we complete the genocide path and then the true pacifist route? It makes sense that Gaster, an NPC characterised by how he was shattered across space and time, exists in some universes but not in others. The functional part therefore means the universe we're currently in. Universe stands for the place and time we find ourselves in, and number stands for the multiple segmented timelines and realities that stand separate from one another. So what about other generic acronyms such as AT and DF? Well, boringly enough, I feel they really do stand for simply attack and defence. There's nothing to really imply that they mean otherwise. Or maybe they mean something like apathy tally and dead friends respectively. It's hard to say for sure, but with EXP and love having such morbid meanings, I wouldn't say it's impossible that they too have evil secrets. Undertale, after all, seems to thrive off surprising us and throwing curveballs when we least expect them. There's a long list of words in Undertale that appear out of sequence, are sure, and seemingly don't belong anywhere. For example, what about the human's name? Frisk. It's these words that we should attempt to decode in an attempt to find hidden meanings. It's also part of the fun, as we can build entire models of logic around what we think acronyms stand for. While HP could mean hope like K. Jensen suggested, I also saw someone suggest that it could mean hostility points, and at the end of the day, it could always simply mean health points. Be sure to comment with what you think the words in Undertale may stand for, and whether there's any conspicuously short words that you think could have a hidden meaning. You may very well discover something completely new. Well, that's about does it for looking at acronyms. As you can see, it's quite possible that there's a completely hidden narrative within Undertale, just waiting to be discovered. However, I didn't want to get too outlandish with what I translated the acronyms to, as otherwise it'd just be two steps back for every one step forward. Be sure to tell me what you think in the comments, particularly your opinions on the acronym FUN, and tell me whether you can think of any words that may also secretly harbour hidden meanings. Okay, well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't be consumed by your lust for EXP and love, and I'll see you next time. Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to the scientists here at the Underlab. My head scientist Nightcore Master, Cameron Vigil, Kay Jensen, Asgore and Shee and Sophronius, and my Underlab scientists Crystal Sleet, Nicholas Ducks, Armin Arla, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Lieutenant Omega, and Yushio Karoni. Thanks to the generosity of every name you see here, this channel is able to keep going. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.